Hi everybody, today we've got another question from subscribers about Logic App Standard and how connectors work. So today we're going to talk about authentication and the security side of both built-in and cloud connectors. So scenario one we're going to look at is um, a cloud connector once it's in Azure and if you notice here the Logic App is deployed into the cloud. So here We've got um, a resource group, we've got an app service plan or an ESE. Um, just a note, um, in today's video, we're not going to talk about the VNet connectivity side of things. So I've done videos in the past about ESE versus WS1 plans. So please check them out to learn a bit more about those different options. Um, in a future video, um, if people are interested, we can maybe dig a, deep, uh, dig a bit deeper into the vnet connectivity but today we're going to just focus on the authentication side so this scenario i've got my logic app deployed into azure so you can see that represented here i'm just going to make this pen slightly smaller i think and then we've got um definitely not that big and then we've got our workflows down here. So what happens in this scenario is we're going to connect to an Azure SQL database. So I'm going to use this example in each of these scenarios just so we're comparing like for like and we'll talk about some of the considerations on each one. So I've deployed my Logic App into Azure here. I've also deployed an API connector, in, which is a cloud connector. Um, which will talk to SQL for me. Now, if you want to know videos about how to configure those collect connectors, please check out the channel. I think we've got a few videos and examples on here. Now, what we're, what we're thinking about here is um, in my Logic app, so when I've con deployed the connector, I've configured a connections.json, which I'll know about um, things like, so in that, in that connections.json, it'll have things like the runtime, URL which will point to this cloud connector and it'll basically give it the address for where the connector is. So that's one of the things you'll see in your app settings. Um, so, when, so I guess one thing actually to note here probably that is really replaced by app settings which get injected into parameters. Um, so my connector, the Logic App workflow is going to configure an action that points to the cloud connector and then that's going to make a call over port 443 so that's an HTTPS call from the workflow behind the scenes to the cloud connector so key thing here is even though we're using SQL this cloud connector is basically a proxy to the SQL database so it's making an HTTP call out to the cloud connector using port 443 so it's HTTPS and then in the because we're running in the cloud here on this connector i'm going to have managed identity configured which will basically control access from my logic app here to the cloud connector here so this this is where on the cloud connector resource i'd be configuring our back access to say logic app um, one and logic app two can call this cloud connector but then that'll basically control which ones of your logic apps can access this connector here. Now, as we say, the cloud connector acts as a proxy. So behind the scenes, when I've deployed my cloud connector, in this case, I've configured um, a connection string. So that connector knows of the connection string for the SQL database. And when the call comes in from the workflow over port 443, the connector's making a call using port 1433 to my SQL Azure database. So, so really the, the SQL connection part is initiated inside the cloud connector. Now, point to note here at the top, um, when I've deployed my cloud connector, in this case, I'm just using connection string, um, but I could have used managed identity or I could have used um, other options, you know, service principle. I think there's a couple of others. But the key thing is there's a differentiation between the authentication here and the authentication there. There's, there's two parts to it. So in this case, managed identity from the workflow to the cloud connector and then connection string from the cloud connector to the SQL database. 
So next up, we've got the exact same scenario. We've got a cloud connector, but this time the key difference is I'm running on my dev box. So here I've got a virtual machine. Here's the developer over here using VS Code. And I'm running my logic app inside func.exe. So it's running, it's, you know, so I've F5 ran it. The function runtime spins up. It loads my workflows. I execute one. And then it's going to call out to this cloud connector that I've got configured. So the key difference is the cloud connector is deployed in the resource group on Azure. So same as before, the workflow is going to make a call over port 443. So we're doing an HTTPS call to the cloud connector. But one of the differences is this time, because um, in the Logic app, when it's deployed in Azure, it's going to use managed identity. But here we've got this access key. So what would happen is when I use VS Code and, and it refreshes the connectors behind the scenes, I think it's something like every seven days, it'll go and refresh a new connection key, which lets it hit the cloud connector. And that's going to get configured inside your connections.json. So you'll see that, I think it's called raw key or something like that, the parameter name. But you'll see that in your connections.json file. And that's used for the workflow running in func.exe to hit the cloud connector. Now, RBAC, as we said in the previous one, RBAC's configured on the cloud connector. However, because we're running on the dev box and we're not using managed identity, the RBAC doesn't apply in this scenario because we have the access key. So it's kind of like um, the difference if you were using API, it's the difference between an API key versus managed identity. So in this case, because we're on the dev box, the access key lets us hit the cloud connector and we don't, um, we're not using managed identity here. Now, everything else is the same before. The connection to SQL is initiated in the cloud connector. In this case, we're using connection string here. Um, if, you know, if we had the firewall configured on the SQL Azure database, we'd really be configuring the firewall to allow an Azure resource in the resource group to be able to connect to it. So we don't... Um, the SQL database doesn't really care about the VM that my code's running on. It's really configuring the firewall to allow the cloud connector here to talk to it. Um, okay. So next up, we've got um, the built-in connectors now. So here we're on Azure. We've got a built-in connector instead of a cloud connector. That's the key difference. So if you notice the resource script we've still got here, and this time we're deployed in Azure, not on the dev box. So this is the same as the first scenario. So in the resource script, we've still got the SQL database, but if you notice the cloud, uh, the connector has moved inside of the logic app here. So if you notice this, this boundary here. So that's the difference between the cloud connector and the built-in connector is where it's executing from. So the built-in connectors inside this logic app container. So here we've got our, um, I guess that one should be app settings again, so like are in the diagram. So here we've got our connections.json configuring the, the built-in connectors. We can pick up settings from app settings and from parameters.json and then when the workflow calls the connector down here, so the key thing is the SQL connection is initiated from here. So that's the difference from before. So here, we're inside the execution on the Logic app, and we're calling out from here to the SQL database over 1433. So that, that um, connection using port 1433 is initiated from inside the logic app this time, whereas before it was initiated inside the cloud connector. Now, in this case, we're using connection string. So the connection string would have been configured either in your app settings or your connections.json. We could equally have used managed identity or one of the other authentication schemes here if we'd wanted to. The key difference is um, there's no hop using managed identity from the workflow to the cloud connector. In this case, I'm just passing through a connection string, but I could, if I, you know, if we come back to this point up here, I could use managed identity as the authentication scheme, and it would be picking up the 
the logic apps managed identity here would be used for that connection um, the firewall I guess one point on the firewall here so here we'd be allowing the logic app to have access as opposed to allowing the API connection to have access that would be one of the differences on the firewall side now the final scenario we're going to look at is the built-in connector but this time we're on the dev box again so if you notice we now have the resource group over here and the virtual machine back here my logic app code is running inside funk.exe on my dev box and here i've got my built-in connection running inside funk.exe it's picking up settings from the connections.json the parameters and the local settings and I've configured this connection with a connection string for SQL. So my workflow, when I trigger it on my dev box, my workflow accesses this, the built-in connector. The SQL connection gets initiated from inside funk.exe on my VM. And that makes the call out to the Azure SQL database over port 1433. So the first thing to note that's different is... Um, the firewall so this time instead of being allowing an azir resource such as my logic app to connect i now need permission from this vm so the firewall to support that's going to be configured differently so i'm accessing it from my vm which may be in azir but it may be somewhere else um the other thing to note here is um the authentication scheme so before we could use managed identity and other things because um because the sql connectivity was initiating from inside Azure but this time because it's initiating inside my logic app here and my logic app isn't running on Azure it's running in funk.exe so managed identity is not currently supported and there's actually a, um, an article or a thread on github about that um, discussion what the current state is so the, um, I think the product team's plan is that for there's a few reasons they've technically not supported that so far. Um, what they're expecting is people would be able to flip over um, this built-in connector from using what a different scheme to using managed identity when you deploy it to the cloud. So I think there's there's reasons why that. I would kind of expect that um, you know, it would make sense at some point if this was an Azure VM which had a managed identity associated with it, that funk.exe would just pick up, um, which I think some of the functions um, connectors can do. Then you would assume that could be supported here theoretically, but I'm guessing there's a bit of work and complexity around why they haven't done that yet. Um, so the key things, just reiterating, is the firewall is going to be different because it's your VM. The authentication currently doesn't support managed identity. The connection's getting initiated from your VM. So, so the key thing comparing this to the cloud connector is we're not calling out over SSL to Azure. We're calling out to Azure over 1433 from your dev box now. So you may even have an outbound firewall issue here as well as an inbound firewall issue there that depending on where you're running your code and stuff. Um, so the aim of today's video is really just to talk through these scenarios to help people understand uh, where the connections get initiated from, some of the security considerations and how for some scenarios like cloud connectors, there's two hops where the authentication comes into play, how on your dev box there's a couple of limitations to just be aware of. So hopefully this gives people a great overview to help them sort of you know just demystify some of this complexity um today's video was driven by um subscriber questions so please feel free to ping any questions in the comments if you've got feedback on this video or if you'd like to see other videos in the future um thank you for listening today have a great week